Has Fantasy Total War ruined Historical Total War? A question man has been asking since the dawn of time, or about three years. But the response to this question will vary depending on who you ask. There are three main types of Total War players out there. There's the historical purist, those who have only ever played historical Total War and won't touch Fantasy Total War with a freaking pike. They may think it's stupid or childish or unbalanced, they want nothing to do with this fantasy nonsense. And then at the other end of the spectrum, the Fantasy Boys. Those who have only ever played Warhammer 1 and 2, haven't touched any historical titles and aren't interested in touching them because perhaps they're just not really that interested in history and they prefer their orcs, wizards and lizards. The release of Total War Warhammer ushered in a new age of Total War fan. Those that had come from loving Warhammer tabletop and couldn't resist the opportunity to turn their tabletop love into a more realistic experience. Although maybe more unrealistic depending on how you look at it. And then there's those in the middle. Those who enjoy both fantasy and historical Total War. And this is my place my friends. I'm someone who's put hundreds of hours into historical Total Wars and of course hundreds of hours into fantasy Total Wars. The first Total War I played properly was Shogun 2, but it was after the release of Rome 2 because I heard it was dodgy and a mess when it came out so I didn't touch it. I eventually went back to Rome 2, enjoyed that, went on to play Attila and a bit of Medieval 2 along the way. I've never tried the gunpowder heavy Total Wars, Empire and Napoleon. I know a lot of people regard them very highly, but for me, not really interested in that era of history personally. I'm more of a sword and shield kind of guy. But anyway, before fantasy came along, I was enjoying the historical Total War titles immensely. But then 2016 hit, along with Total War Warhammer, the first fantasy Total War. And boy, did it change the game up. Never before had we experienced such faction variety, such elaborate map design, epic visuals of magic and monsters and all this stuff coming together in one place. Everybody's favourite characters from the lore and the battles and the scenery. Oh, it's just all there. It's just all there for all the Warhammer fanboys. I wasn't one of them. Don't get me wrong, I was never into Warhammer lore or anything before I played Total War Warhammer, but it has got me a little bit more interested in the lore of Warhammer, just as historical titles got me way more interested in history the more I played those. So my point is, I come from a relatively unbiased place because I love both sides of the argument. I love fantasy, I love historical. But of course, as you may have noticed, I have way more hours in Warhammer than I do in the historicals, but that's mostly because of this channel. When I first made a Total War Warhammer video, I had 300 subscribers. So Total War Warhammer has made this channel what it is today, but of course that means putting a lot of hours into videos, which is why I've had so much time in Warhammer. Most of that isn't playing the game, it's just gathering footage and trying to get stuff for videos. So it's fair to say, I enjoyed them both equally. At least, I thought I did. Once Total War Warhammer came out, I didn't really play much historical because I was focused on the channel and making videos so I didn't really get time to go back to it. Most of my playing time of Total War became Warhammer focused. So back when I was playing only historical titles, I really enjoyed those historical titles and really loved Total War. Then I started playing Warhammer and I pretty much then only played that so I went from kind of one to the other. I went from a few years of historical to a couple of years of fantasy. I imagine that there's some people out there who have done the same. And whichever side of the argument you fall on, whichever one of those three you are, none are wrong. Everyone is free to enjoy what they want. I'm not saying that historical purists are silly for not liking Warhammer, or Warhammer fanboys are dumb for not getting into the historicals. Each to their own, enjoy whatever the hell you want. Doesn't matter what everyone else is playing. But I thought I'd make this video to discuss something that happened to me when I went back to playing historical titles after playing so much Warhammer. And I know I'm not alone in this because I've had a lot of comments saying similar things. People with similar experiences who are also, like me, somewhat confused by their experience with Total War now. And of course the release of Three Kingdoms brings even more confusion to the table. But anyway, for now let's turn the clock back to 2018. At this point Total War Warhammer and Total War Warhammer 2 had both been out for a while, so Warhammer was in full swing. And with 2018 came the first historical title since the release of Total War Warhammer, Thrones of Britannia. The wait for historical purists was finally over. No more did they have to look at all this Total War Warhammer bullshit coming up on CA's feed. They could now see some historical stuff again and get excited about it. And I was one of them. I love my Vikings in the Viking era, so I thought this is going to be fucking sweet. But after about 15 hours of pre-release but still near release 
gameplay of Thrones of Britannia, I decided, nah. I simply couldn't get interested. The factions had nothing about them, the units were boring, they only had a few stats, there were less stats than ever before, which was odd, the maps were all the same, the campaign, just just nothing, Just no, I felt nothing playing the campaign, I didn't care about any of the stuff, there was no massive historical figure they were trying to push to get behind some sort of character, I just for the life of me could not get into it. And I should also mention though that I'm more of a battles guy in Total War. I'm 75% about playing the battles, that's what I enjoy the most about Total War, and then 25% campaign. I'm not a huge fan of kingdom management and managing all the food and all the public order and all this stuff. Not really what I'm hugely into, I enjoy it a bit, but I'm mostly about the battles. And that was kind of a good thing for Warhammer for me because it was kind of simplified. I guess it was simplified because they were going to attract a whole new audience with Total War Warhammer. They didn't want to make it too confusing like the historical titles often were. Because new players to the series may struggle and dislike it if it's all confusing and complex. Obviously a lot of people do enjoy that complexity and plenty of people love the complexity of historical titles and probably hate maybe how simple Warhammer is. But again, that's personal opinion, personal preference. But what my point is here is that when I went back to playing Thrones of Britannia, a historical title, everything became confusing and complex again. All these family tree systems and governor systems and province systems, I just couldn't be asked with it. And maybe that's one of the first things that Warhammer had spoilt me on. I'm so used to this simplified, dumbed down version of the campaign that it's what I've come to enjoy. And now coming back to historical with all these new complex systems in Thrones of Britannia, I just couldn't find the energy for it. And with battles, it was kind of the opposite experience. There was only like six stats, which is a hideously low amount for Total War. And it meant that all the units were very similar, if not just very uninteresting. And as a battles guy, I just couldn't find any energy to care about any of the armies or the units. So then I started to question, am I losing my interest in Total War historical games? Has Warhammer spoilt me because I don't have the unit variety that Warhammer presents? We've got orcs, we've got dwarfs, we've got elves, they all play completely differently as a faction. And that's so exciting with Warhammer. But don't get me wrong, Warhammer battles definitely do have their flaws and imbalances, and it's kind of designed as an asymmetric game, but that's just part of it. We love it in spite of that. And when you look back on historical titles after playing Warhammer, you realise how unvaried the factions are in historical titles. Although, things like Rome 2 were actually quite varied. You had the heavily armoured Roman legions, the lightly armoured Germanic tribes who were a bit faster, a bit more aggressive. You had Royal Scythia who were pretty much just all horses, all cavalry. The Spartans with only spears. So there was some variety that made those factions interesting from each other and a little bit different. But anyway, back to Thrones of Britannia. I was asking myself whether I was bored of historical titles because I wasn't interested in this one. And I should be. I love historical titles. I love Vikings. Why couldn't I get into this? Well, luckily, I discovered that the answer was very simple. Thrones of Britannia was shit. It just wasn't a good Total War game. Thank God, it's not me, it's just the game. The game sucks, I'm fine, I still love historical. I even made a video about how I wasn't going to do videos on Thrones of Britannia because it was just an Attila reskin to me, and I was not interested in the slightest. So, crisis slightly averted, right? I go back to play a historical title, I hate it, I question my very existence in Total War. But it turns out, it's just the game's fault. It's okay, never mind, we'll just write that one off and wait for the next historical title. So, I trundle back off to Total War Warhammer and enjoy that thoroughly as I did before. But occasionally, from time to time, I do venture on to some older historical titles. I go back to Rome 2 occasionally. And while I do for the most part enjoy it, I can't put a few hours into it before going, eh, I'm gonna go back to Warhammer now. And even playing Rome 2, the one that I just said had a bit more faction diversity than the other ones, still I find myself unable to really get that excited about the battles now. I still love my Romans, hell, I come from a Roman city. I still love my Germanic tribe, my aggressive Swaby. I'll always have a bit of a spot for Rome 2. But I still didn't feel the same way that I did before. Everything felt so lacklustre now. Where's all my different kinds of units? Where's my fast flanking infantry? Where's my flying cavalry? Where the frick did I put my trolls? Whose dragon is that? All questions that you might ask yourself when playing Total War Warhammer. There's just something far more satisfying watching a massive orc smash into a group of elves than there is watching a regular sized man charge into another regular sized man. It's just not quite the same anymore. So again, these feelings strike me. 
Am I just not interested in historical titles anymore? Has Fantasy Total War actually spoilt me? Why can I not feel excited about my Praetorian Guard anymore? I used to love a Praetorian Guard. They'd smash everyone. But they're not as cool as Chosen now. They're not as cool as Black Orcs. They're not as cool as Swordmasters of Hoa. You've got some Eastern Cataphracts Cavalry eh? from Rome too? Nice. I've got some freaking demigriffs, mate. With halberds. Halberds. What are you? You're just a man with a horse on it. No, oh, the other way around. You're just a horse with a man on it. It's not fun. Who cares? Demigriff. Come on. I'm sorry, Cataphract. I'm sorry. I used to love you. But now I just can't. I just can't get excited about you. The dragons have taken over. The lizards have arrived. The rats are here. What's a nerd to do? Anyway, I think you get my point. I went off on one there a little bit. But you get the idea. Fantasy Total War just has something to offer that historical Total War doesn't. And then it's the same thing with the maps. You've got completely different maps. You've got snowy mountains, you've got vast deserts, you've got forests, you've got tropical islands. You've got all kinds of different environments in Total War Warhammer. Now, in some historical titles, you do have a bit of variety in the maps, sure. Thrones of Britannia, maybe not. It's just pretty much all green fields and trees. But still, no matter how much variety historical Total Wars have in their maps, it's never going to be as vast and as magnificent looking as fantasy. Although in fairness, Three Kingdoms maps can look pretty stunning, as you can see. <sighs> Take it in. Take it in. And then there's the characters. Obviously, coming from Warhammer lore, you've got a vast array of characters with their own backstories and things, and everyone can get into and play as their personal hero. You can be Grimgore, you can be Tyrion, you can be Ungrim, you can be Archaeon, the motherfucking ever chosen. And I think that's something that people can connect to, which you don't really get in historical titles. So there's all these things that Warhammer can do to best the historical games, but what can historical do to best Warhammer? Well, that brings us back to the present day and the release of the first historical title since Thrones of Bortania, Total War Three Kingdoms. Finally, it was happening. It's a total war I'd always dreamed of. I thought it would be a great period for them to cover. I personally love Chinese history. I love Three Kingdoms. I grew up playing Dynasty Warriors, like I'm sure many of you did, which got me into the lore of it. And when I realized, oh, these are all actual real people at one point in time. So I went ahead and read the Three Kingdoms novel that all the characters in Dynasty Warriors were based on. In fact, the novel is currently used as my webcam stand. So I was all ready to love Total War Three Kingdoms because I love the period, I love the people, I love the heroes, I love the stories. And when I found out that it was going to be partially a fantasy Total War almost and a historical title, well I just thought that was perfect. They offered people both. You could play classic mode if you don't want all the silly overpowered heroes, but if you fancy a bit of fantasy, you could get those overpowered heroes. You could get a mighty Guan Yu, a devastating Zhao Yun, or of course a terrifying Lu Bu. So Three Kingdoms was catering for both those historical purists and the Warhammer boys. But guess what? Those feelings that I'd felt in Thrones of Britannia, and eventually in Rome too, had snuck up on me and had got me in Three Kingdoms. There was a limit to my excitement. I really enjoyed my heroes, I really enjoyed watching them destroy many men, but honestly they make the battles a little bit unexciting because they just destroy everything. You don't really need to be very tactical and well managed with your army on the battlefield, because your heroes can probably kill them all by themselves anyway. So while I love the idea of being able to use these powerful heroes that I grew up playing in Dynasty Warriors, they were just too much in Total War. Now of course we could play Classic Mode, which then returns us to a more historical Total War style. But the problem with this is the same thing that plagued the Romance Mode, is that all the units on all armies are basically all the same. Everyone's got the same units. All the Warlords, no matter which one you choose, they've got pretty much the same units. A few unique units here and there, but nothing to really add faction diversity. This is much the same as Shogun 2, which is a fantastic game and goes down really well and works great for Shogun 2. But now, after playing Warhammer and having such massive diversity, having everyone with the same units just isn't that fun. No matter how much I try to enjoy it. I feel like my unit matchups don't really matter. I pretty much just charge my frontline into whatever the enemy has. I don't really care what it is. I don't even check the matchups. Charge some cavalry around the back, charge them in the back, and it's game over. Every battle, you can beat the AI very easily with hammer and anvil. And if there are any tougher units to deal with, then you just send a hero in to sort them out. 
and this is the case in both modes, Classic or Romance. I haven't played a ton of Classic mode to be honest, but Hammer and Anvil still reigns supreme. And you can't do that in Warhammer, you have to pay attention or you will get destroyed by bad unit matchups. Although one thing I will say in Three Kingdoms favour in the battles is that its battle AI is actually a lot better than Warhammer. Warhammer's is pretty atrocious, as I'm sure many of us know. But anyway, back to the original point, despite having powerful interesting heroes, the rest of our armies are kind of boring, because they're all the same as everyone else's armies. But that's just the battle side. The campaign side of Three Kingdoms is a different story. This I actually really enjoy, and it puts me more 50-50 in my little battles to campaign ratio that I mentioned earlier. I really enjoy the Three Kingdoms campaign and I like what they've done with it. It really feels like you're crafting your own story with your characters and you start to grow attached to them. So if they die in battle or die of old age, it kind of means something to you, which is something that Warhammer lacks, because your legendary lords can't die in campaigns, they're never going anywhere, they're always going to return, so you're never going to get pissed off or sad if they die. So that's one good thing that Total War Historical is putting over fantasy right there. Another thing would be the diplomacy system. Never before has it felt so satisfying to make deals and be a bit of a businessman in the campaign. I can make nothing but farms if I want to and just make my money by selling the food to other factions rather than getting money by other means. So Three Kingdoms campaign is definitely putting some steps in the right direction, but the battles, not so much. With the feelings, like I said, of not having the variety the Warhammer offers, well that's massively amplified by Three Kingdoms and the fact that everyone has the same units for the most part. Now we do have the yellow turbans who are slightly different in all their units, but they're still just men with swords and spears essentially. Now of course it would be ridiculous and unreasonable to expect Three Kingdoms to do anything majorly fantasy because it is a historical game. In China back in 200 AD there was only men with spears and swords. There was no orcs, there were no dwarfs, it would make no sense if they started to add silly stuff just to make it more varied. So that's fine, we come to expect that. You can't set a total war game in one country and expect it to be massively varied in the units, of course. But that doesn't help with the feelings that I've been experiencing when playing historical titles now. There's something missing, it's not as good and as exciting as Warhammer. What can I do to be as excited about these little Chinese men running around with spears as I do my orcs running around with axes? I'm not sure what exactly it is that's missing, but I'm definitely feeling it and I know it's there. So that's pretty much the gist of it. That's all I really wanted to say. I think it's an interesting topic. This isn't normally the kind of video I would do, a sort of discussion video, but like I said, it's something that's been bothering me when I play Total War and I just wanted to talk about it and see what you people thought about it. So by all means, drop your thoughts on this in the comments. I'll be interested to hear from all sides of the spectrum, whether you're a historical purist or a fantasy fanboy or somewhere in the middle like me, let me know. I'm interested, I'm intrigued. If you're a historical purist, why won't you touch Warhammer? Let me know. If you're a Warhammer fanboy that's only joined since Warhammer came out, why haven't you touched the historical games? Let me know. And don't get me wrong with all of this, I don't want to discourage anyone from trying out historical or fantasy. The previous Total Wars are still great games, Shogun 2, Rome 2, Attila, all still worth a play if you can get into them. And I think another big part of someone being interested in historical titles or not is whether they're interested in the period that the game is set in. Like I said, I've never really touched Empire because that era doesn't really interest me. So if you're not into Chinese history or Japanese history, then it's understandable that you don't want to touch Three Kingdoms or Shogun 2. But who knows, maybe if you did play those titles, it would get you interested in that history and that culture. I mean, Shogun 2 has samurais and ninjas. What more do you want? So please don't be put off trying historical titles if you're a Warhammer fanboy, but don't be surprised if you get the same feelings as me. You may love it or hate it. And if I had to recommend a Total War for Warhammer fanboys to try to get into historicals, as people often ask me, I'd say Rome 2. It's the one that's the closest to Warhammer, I think, with faction diversity, lots of different units, and map diversity as well. So we'll have to see now how Total War progresses as a game. We know Total War Warhammer 3 is coming, that's going to be the next fantasy title, but what comes after that? I find it unlikely that they'll go back to just doing historical titles, because Total War Warhammer has been such a resounding success, and what a damn good move it was. Although was it, because now it's ruined historical. I think anyway. Who knows? But where could they go next? The obvious choices that people often say, Total War Lord of the Rings, Total War Game of Thrones, and of course, Total War Warhammer 40k. 
any of those could be pretty sweet titles if they pull them off correctly. We do have some leaks and rumours going around at the moment. Total War Troy as part of the Saga series like Thrones of Britannia. Hopefully it's better than Thrones of Britannia though, eh? Total War Caveman, something that we saw leaked on a stream by accident by CA. Who knows what that means? It's obviously a code word. I imagine it's not actually cavemen running around with spears and swords and stuff, but who knows? We'll see where they take it. For now, we've got Three Kingdoms and we've got Warhammer 3 coming up. So yeah, we'll have to see where they go. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think about this in the comments and I will see you in the future.